Hello. A lot of people were interested in what I eat to maintain a healthy gut because this was my before and after. As you can see, I was very inflamed and had a lot of acne. A big part of having a healthy gut is making sure that you're taking in a lot of probiotics and prebiotics. And a lot of people rely on supplements to do that, but I was able to really heal my gut, making sure that I incorporate a lot of prebiotics and probiotics into my diet. So no, I don't really take a lot of supplements, which a lot of people ask me. And it's because Korean food is really nutritious. It has a lot of fermented foods that contain a lot of probiotics to begin with. And it's also really easy to make. So this video is when you're mildly depressed, not like debilitatingly depressed where you can't get out of bed yet, but potentially getting there if you don't start taking care of yourself. And honestly, there are a lot of studies out there that are linking a healthy gut to mental health. And disclaimer, I'm not an expert on health. I'm just someone who struggled with bloating, constipation, acne, being a bitch because I was easily irritated, fatigue, foggy brain. There's so many things that a bad gut can actually really impact in your day-to-day -day life. Once I start to realize what foods help combat some of those things with the help of my healer, I noticed drastic changes. As you can see, like, look at that, that energy, that energy, baby, that, that glow, that confidence. <laughs> Basically, I don't want to hear you guys being like, this doesn't work, this food's not good for you. These are generally very good, healthy foods. Every body is different and you may react differently to it, but for the most part, this should be good. So I've talked long enough. Let's get on to these 15 minute Korean gut friendly meals for when you're mildly depressed. First up is steamed green cabbage wraps. A lot of people have this idea that food is either good or bad for you. We need to stop looking at food as either good or bad, but complex and situational. Pork belly makes you feel full for a long time because of its saturated fat, but like everything, balance is key and over consuming it won't be great for those with an unbalanced diet. I take about two to three strips and fry on medium heat. Steamed cabbage is high in fiber, which keeps your gut healthy because it helps it digest food easily. While I'm frying the pork belly, I steam the cabbage. This should take about five to 12 minutes depending on how much you steam, but just check in from time to time until it's no longer crunchy. After the pork belly is almost done, I add well-fermented homemade kimchi and some onions to the pan. If you don't have homemade, you can buy this version from the store. This version is the well-fermented one. We all know kimchi is super gut healthy because it has probiotics, which are helpful bacteria in your gut. Note that if you cook foods with probiotics, it'll actually kill the bacteria, so avoid frying if you want the full benefits. Chop up some garlic, which is also super good for your gut because it's a prebiotic, which is food for probiotics found in kimchi. Don't eat too much though because it can irritate your gastrointestinal tract and cause bloating. Serve with samjang sauce on the side, which I'll explain what this is in the last recipe. Serve with white or brown rice. I know this instant rice is not good for the environment, but sometimes we depressed people need food to be quick. So you put this hamgyup sar, the pork belly, some kimchi, some rice, chopped garlic, onion, and a shitload of samjang. Okay, so it's all wrapped, right? Mmm, the juices from the steamed cabbage as you're chewing are so good. It really complements everything so well. Steamed cabbage also has a ton of antioxidants and it's really good for your skin. When you steam it rather than eating it raw, it's also easier for you to digest. Ah. Uh... Oh. Next is tofu kimchi or tubu kimchi. Tofu is high in protein and fiber and easy for me to digest. People usually boil this for five minutes, but I like to just slice it and eat it cold when I'm in a rush. But this time I steamed it. I fried some kimchi and vegetable oil, but again, if you want the full benefits of the probiotics in this, refrain from frying. By now we know kimchi raw has the probiotic and provides you with good bacteria in your gut. Good bacteria equals good gut, equals good skin, brain function, less inflammation, and happiness. I drizzle a little bit of sesame oil on top of it. It's high in antioxidants and good for your skin. Plating is key. With this dish. It looking so beautiful literally gives me serotonin. Pork belly is also optional and you can add it with the kimchi or cook it separately. I added some sesame seeds on top of the kimchi too. Along with the sesame oil, it adds a nutty taste. Chop up some scallions as garnish. It's a good source of fiber and a high source of vitamin. This is one of my favorite, favorite lazy meals. Pork belly is optional. I had some from the last recipe, so mm-hmm, mm-hmm, wrap. And then if you want to take it another step further, okay, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, wrap. Mm. Mm, 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 mm. 
Last nail is tenjin jjigae or soybean paste soup. This stew can be made in so many different ways, but I'm going to make it the quickest way for this video. I use rice water as base for thicker, more nutritious soup. The rice water adds an extra layer of improved digestion for my constipated girlies. If you don't have rice water nor the time, you can use regular water or a kelp anchovy pack. I added about two and a half spoons of samjang, which is basically soybean paste mixed with gochujang or chili pepper flake paste. It makes it a bit spicier, which I love. Then I add about two spoons of tenjang or soybean paste. If you have issues with digestion or constipation, this is the meal for you because soybean paste is known to help with that. It's also high in vitamins and minerals. In this video, I didn't add soybean paste but really well fermented soybeans because I didn't have soybean paste. It's super stinky and an acquired taste but so so good. You leave the samjang and tenjang in there until it boils, then add onions and zucchinis for 3 minutes, then add mushroom and tofu for another 3 minutes and take selfies while you wait. This enoki mushroom, which is one of my favorite mushrooms. Optional some zucchini, it's all added in some onions. And, oh, and tofu. I added that in from the meal before. Mmm. Mm -hmm. There's literally nothing that I can do. Like everything I do, it's good. This is another type of kimchi. Koreans basically kimchi-fy everything. We ferment a lot of vegetables. This is radish. So, you know, there's two parts to the radish. There's the main part. Then there's also these leaves that it's attached to. That's actually really, really, really good for you. And sometimes that is put in tenjang jjigae, soybean paste soup. Obviously not fermented like this, but it's really good for your digestion. Oh, it's a very hearty stew that's just perfect for the winter time. It's literally, I think, 13 degrees here today. It was so cold. And I went to H Mart so I could film this video for you guys. Next time I'm gonna get like a mini gas range so I can cook on this table where this lighting is a lot better and the sunlight's nice. Cause let's be honest, cooking back there wasn't it, right guys? It was like a little dark. It wasn't it. I think I got rid of my contour. 